London to me is just the world. There's so many options and so many things to experience. I perceive it really to be the epicenter of a lot of innovation. There's all sorts of creative things that are being done with surplus food in the community. Curry was part of their life. Okay, guys, so here we have it. A yeah. great journey in London. Seguro que será una experiencia interesante. Y seguro que será muy útil para nuestra creatividad. La cocina es un lenguaje para contar historias, historias que, que pretenden llegar al, al corazón a través del cerebro y del estómago. ¿no? Hay, un, hay un equilibrio entre nuestros objetivos, ¿no? pero el objetivo para un cocinero, obviamente, más allá de saciar, de alimentar, más allá de esto, queremos emocionar de alguna forma, llegar al corazón. Aquello que a veces gente llama humildad, pero que a mí me gusta más hablar de, de apego a la tierra. Y hacerlo desde la generosidad. Y hacerlo con una hospitalidad. Y en definitiva son la parte más esencial de lo que hoy es el ser de Can Roca y de lo que somos cada uno de los tres. Trying to take something as big as a city and bottle it is something that we've not looked at before. It's definitely a challenge. I think it's a chance to, to do something different, to work with people who we can relate to, uh, who are masters at what they do, who are passionate. There's a, a rich history and heritage to what they do and it's something that we can really relate to at the McAllen and with the Rocker Brothers. So it's bringing a whole load of different experiences, uh, different crafts together, and, and trying to sum that all up in an experience. It's really exciting. A nosotros nos gustan los retos. O sea, es verdad que desde que el sello está en marcha, hemos aceptado retos muy diversos. Nos encanta da sentido a lo que hacemos. We are going to visit masters of their craft, experience cuisine, innovation, and things that we can both relate to. Bring that back to the restaurant and the distillery and be creative and see what comes out of that process. Es posible destilar una ciudad Si nos lo proponemos, lo conseguiremos. Londres es, es una capital, una capital mundial y una capital también gastronómica. Un lugar donde han llegado eh, siempre todo lo nuevo que aparecía en algún lugar del planeta iba hacia Londres abierta, cosmopolita y, sobre todo, integradora de culturas. Y, al mismo tiempo, como decíamos, filtra todas esas culturas y las convierte en ofertas gastronómicas fascinantes, diversas, mezcladas, fusión. Vamos a Londres 
a divertirnos, pero sobre todo a aprender y a comprender cómo está el mundo. Lo que ves en Londres es una síntesis de lo que puedes ver en el mundo. Y ese espacio de viajar por el mundo probablemente tiene mucho que ver con ese pozo de historia y también de autenticidad que respira Londres. El reto de destilar y captar los aromas y hacer algo vinculado a una ciudad, esto ya es fascinante. Al final es una provocación que hace que eh, tengamos que forzar la creatividad. Y eso a nosotros nos va muy bien, nos viene bien. Y vamos a tener que, que hablar con gente diversa, ¿no? que te pueda ayudarnos a entender mejor la ciudad, la multiculturalidad, las influencias, visitar mercados, hablar con cocineros, que nos pueda aportar puntos de vista distintos. Por la Inés. Pero también hay gente de la moda, gente de la innovación, gente de otros campos que, que aparentemente no están ligados con la nuestra idea de, de qué es Londres, pero, pero seguramente es una, una suma de, de muchos componentes diferentes. ¿no? Es muy inspirador estar los tres juntos, porque tenemos un método no escrito, un método que está en nuestra mente de alguna manera conectada, que cuando vemos algo, los tres estamos pensando eh, en qué hacer con esto y cada uno desde su ámbito, desde su óptica, y es muy enriquecedor también para la nuestra creatividad el ir juntos y el ver desde tres eh, ópticas distintas una idea. I would say that London really is the sum of its parts. It's a modern city, but it's built on its history. When you look at its food, I mean, today you can get almost anything you want to here. Fresh plan, I have it, thanks. Bumba plan, chicken, let's have a summer in it. From ideas to ingredients to people, really. I mean, all of the leading chefs worked in London. And once you get to the end of the 19th century, of course, All the restaurants are in London as well, so all those ideas come out as well. Looking around, you can see the way in which the globe has come to London, and that London has embraced global cuisine and really made it part of its own. From Moroccan couscous to Indian curries to Lebanese restaurants, it's all here, but it always has been here. When you look back at London throughout the centuries, it's always been a real melting pot, a global centre of trade. Abraza, es una ciudad que abraza, que cualquier realidad gastronómica se siente allí bien, porque es la casa de todos. Ah, Shetland. I visited Shetland. There's, fish is one of those things that used to be on every single British table, as long as you were rich enough to have it. You'd always have soup and fish and meat, then vegetables, then more meat, then some sweet dishes, then ice creams and fruit. I mean, you can see just looking at this, you've got Dorset scallops, you've got Dorset turbot, you've got Shetland monkfish, uh, you've got Norwegian cod, you've got things coming in from the Mediterranean, like the octopus, and it's typical of British cuisine that it comes in from pretty much everywhere. A lot everywhere. of sea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some scallops. Yes. Uh, How many would you like, sir? Five. Eight. Eight pieces. Wow, well, look at this. We have mint also here, yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Herbs were always very important. Queen Victoria, her favourite was mutton that was 10 years old. And mint sauce is the, the accompaniment. So just a bit of mint, tiny bit of sugar and some vinegar. And that's all you would do. When you choose only one ingredient of, uh, from London, about the food, which is your idea? It's a really good question. You know, as soon as Britain started to colonise the world, really, and India was one of those places it traded with very early on, curry came back. So we know that you could buy curry in London at a coffee house by the 1790s. The first curry house specifically to eat curry was founded in 1810 here in London. And curry is about the most British, English thing I can think of.
I think we should pay homage to London because it gave us a home. Thank so nice you. to meet you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much. And this whole place is smelling like somewhere in India. It's a really kind of intense smell of spice. And the thing with spice is that, you know, there's a long history. Going back to colonial times, the first Indian restaurant, all the British who went to India came back with Kedigree. It was an influence on them forever. But for us, spice is not just what we eat. It is our life. Through food, it is a bridge between me and you. When I feed you, I am connecting to you through the food, but through stories. Cuando te encuentras con un cocinero en cualquier lugar del mundo, hay una conexión emocional absoluta desde el primer momento. Y eso hace que seamos todos libros abiertos. Contamos todo. Esa generosidad vinculada al cocinero es una comunicación franca, sincera, y eso es bonito. Y eso nos permite a nosotros aprender muchísimo cuando viajamos. Too many people are divided, and the curry unites the British and the Indian in one place. I talk to people in the restaurant, they say, first taste we remember was Indian food of something that's not English. Now, that is a big difference because when you remember your childhood and you remember going to a restaurant and tasting your first curry in London with your parents, I think that that is a memory so when they come into a restaurant, everyone will say, you know, I used to go with my mother. Strangely enough, you'll have more Indian restaurants in London as a city than you do in Bombay or Delhi. There are various generations of people who have come from other cultures, who have established in London and continue to maintain that culture. That's also es fascinating, to see a fourth generation of a family Hindu who is still cooking the same as when they were there. And that is fantastic and makes you precisely find very good restaurants, ethnic restaurants, ethnic restaurants, very diverse, very cultures, very diverse, in the same city. We come from a country where people die of hunger. So we know what hunger is, and so you don't throw food. And we don't allow anyone to leave food. If they don't take it, you know, to the house, we pack for the homeless and they give to the homeless on the way out. This is an Indian thing, you know, and everybody knows, you know, all the homeless people. Oh, I had your curry last night. They know. They're also London people. Why shouldn't they have? Es el 30% de lo que se produce en el planeta se tira. Es muchísimo, son toneladas y toneladas. Se parece increíble cuando además sabemos que hay gente que está pasando hambre, ¿no? Entonces, ese, ese mundo de paradojas. My background was on Wall Street. I did that for many years. But after a while, I needed to make a change and really was looking to do something with a purpose. We never know what food we're going to get each day. It's always a surprise. So for people in the food industry, they like visiting here because when they look around, it's always a surprise. Every day is a new day. It's unpredictable. Like, the nature of surplus food is just unpredictable. It's fantastic for the creativity. The, the, the chefs every day invent a, a different menu. Every day. Each week, we deliver enough food for around 80,000 meals. 80,000? Wow. Yeah. yeah. We have a couple of hundred food donors, grocers, restaurants, manufacturers, film shoots, photo shoots, Wimbledon. Many London iconic events have surplus food, and many are getting more sustainable and realizing that if there's edible food, it should go to people versus waste. I knew about food rescue from other cities around the world. So when we arrived in London, um, I realized that no one else was doing this type of work. And um, we had no idea it would get to this size. The size is definitely reflective of the need. We're just about to reach our eight millionth meal delivered since we started five years ago.
the City Harvest delivers to 300 charities throughout London in every borough. And one of them, for example, is Buses for Homeless, which is a really interesting project with currently four decommissioned London double-decker buses that have been converted as a wonderful community for homeless people. One of the concepts or the values que creo que tienen que ser cada vez más importantes en nuestra sociedad, es el de la solidaridad. Cuando éramos pequeños, nuestra madre, por la puerta de la cocina, en los domingos sobre todo, daba comida a los que no podían pagar y no podían entrar en el restaurante. ¿no? Puedes hablar con cualquier cocinero del mundo y ese es un valor común. Está en el ADN del cocinero, la generosidad y la hospitalidad, la solidaridad. We have, um... Your little flour, look. I don't know if you use that. No. We have some rice. We have eggs. Maybe fresh tomatoes. Wow, Guan, you're really good, man. <laughs> Watch your fingers. How come you so fast? And where, where are you from? I, uh, I'm from Camden. I'm from here. It's a rough life, Guan, but it's, 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 you have to try, yeah? You have to survive, yeah? And when you get it yourself in a good position, you try to make the best of it, you know? Hay gente que no tiene recursos y que mal vive o vive en la calle y que necesitan también no solamente alimentarse, sino también afectan también una forma de, 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 de canalizar energía positiva. Yeah, how long you been cooking as a chef? Forty. Forty years. Oh, yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time. That's good. Your experience. Okay. Yeah. Forty years. Forty años. It's really nice to have you, my buddy. And thank you for showing us what to do. Nice, 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 nice. Whoa, I'm hungry right now, you know? I, I can't wait. I think City Harvest is an organization that really has heart. I think it, from myself and everyone else there, it, it's both humbling, it is very real. It, we think it's the heart of London. London's got a pretty long history with tea. Britain was among the last in Europe to get tea, actually. And that was because uh, Oliver Cromwell banned our dealing with the Dutch. And it meant that we, we got tea after them. But when Charles II came back, uh, the son of the executed Charles I, his wife, who was Portuguese, drank tea. And that was sort of among the first records of tea in this country. And tea became popular with the wealthy quite quickly. You know, tea making is about great quality of tea leaves, the right amount of tea, and the right amount of water for the right amount of time. It's simple, but you know, you have to get it right. Mm. Hay un juego sobre los colores, los olores y los sabores. Una de las cosas mágicas que también puedes ver en este mundo del té que tienes ahora mismo en ese lienzo en blanco es que tú participas con tu ser en lo que tú vas a terminar bebiendo. This is also one picking. You can see that the distance between one leaf and the next, do you see how long that is? It's grown slowly. Why is it growing slowly? Because of high altitude and cold and variable conditions. Yeah. Aromas que vienen de lejos, pero que puedes sentir absolutamente próximos, reconfortantes, íntimos. Hay poco más bello que una taza de té. Creo que la sociedad necesita mucho tiempo de té, de pausa, de comprender la calidad del agua y de poder exhalar la naturaleza más bella. Pasearte por esos parques, poder aspirar ese aire que no siempre es de asfalto, 
también puede ser de un césped recién cortado. Para nosotros el proceso creativo tiene que ver con, con distintos inputs, ¿no? no solo hay una parte vinculada a la cultura del gusto, sino que también tiene que ver con esta parte del percibir uh, sensaciones pasando por diferentes calles y, y, y pasan los olores de cada uno de los uh, locales ¿no? en el que sabes que puedes mezclar esa idea del, del café, pero también del té, de los postres tradicionales, de los postres densos, que sabes que, que ahí hay como un olor como mucho más intenso y concentrado. Oh, amazing. Creo que es una, una mirada muy, muy abierta. ¿no? Para nosotros es siempre una, una posibilidad la visita a Londres de, de encontrarte con una inspiración hacia otros campos. You can see garments at various stages, the, the, the tailor's work in the white stitches. This is them molding and sculpting the cloth three dimensionally so it fits beautifully. Yo soy cocinero, los sí. cocineros sí, sí, sí. combinamos materiales y ustedes también, ¿no? Sí, sí, sí. Nosotros cocinamos, salseamos y ustedes y los cosen, los, los cortan, los cosen. <laughs> It's very interesting about the, the watch. Uh, a connection with our with our world. All is different, but all is inspiring for us. You know, a different point of view about about London and then no, but uh, our challenge is capture the, the essence of London for make a <laughs> make a whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Make a whiskey and, and make a, a, a dish and make a, a snacks and, and it's very very important for us to talk. A different dish. In, in that as well, I mean, it comes back to you, you want the person to have a very personal experience and you want them to be looked after from start to finish. And then you suddenly get a reminder of what it's like, you know, like you say, when you go away and you come back. And yeah. it's just really interesting that it's all in memories and thoughts. Yeah. And... La cocina conecta con, con muchas disciplinas distintas porque, porque es algo artesano, es algo manual es algo que tiene que ver con, con el oficio ¿no? y con, con esa conexión emocional que ejerce la cocina en, en nuestro interior y, y un sastre esa conexión que ejerce con, con algo que vas a llevar puesto y que te va y que se va a, se va a mimetizar contigo te va a, a hacer sentir bien de alguna forma ¿no? y por lo tanto es muy importante quien está haciendo eso que lo haga con esa carga emotiva que, con la que cocinamos los cocineros. ¿no? Every suit is unique, really is unique. Yeah. It's not like a sausage factory yeah. where you kind of make one sausage and then the next 5,000 go mm. through. Everyone is unique. So it's a little bit harder work for us, but in a way that's what separates us. It's what makes it special. Yeah, it's it makes a great work, challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Your work is very interesting for us. Creative and yeah, yeah it's traditional and innovation too. It's also buying into the heritage, buying into the idea that you're supporting the craftsmanship which has been handed down for two, three hundred years. Pero ahora, en que todo se está tecnificando tanto, quizá uh, debamos volver a, a conectarnos con otros oficios para ponernos todos juntos en valor, porque si no perderemos algo maravilloso de la cultura y de nuestra sociedad. ¿no? Hay tantos oficios ¿no? que, se están, que se están diluyendo en el mundo de la técnica y de la industria y por lo tanto creo que es bueno reivindicar eso y sobre todo esa, esa, esa conexión ¿eh? que, que hay entre ellos, entre los oficios. Es 
London to me is just the world. It's probably the only city on the entire planet where you get everything you want from a cultural point of view, from a talent point of view, innovation point of view. We had Faraday here, we had Maxwell here. So huge innovations have happened within London, uh, you know, within walking distance right here of King's College. So this is actually quite a historic place for uh, King's College London. Um, it's a chapel, so it's a very religious place. So traditionally, probably uh, you would think, uh, you know, King's College is only doing religion. But truth is that the chapel has always been a, an epicenter of innovation. The students were allowed to ask questions which were going beyond the typical traditional religious boundary. Um, imagine the age where people thought the earth is flat, then they would be allowed to actually ask, hey, what happens if it's round? Uh, King's was always trying very hard to be a university which isn't just focused on one thing, but actually is able to break boundaries by thinking out of the box. <laughs> nice to meet you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> the Internet of Skills is really a form to democratize labor and skills. Same way as the Internet has democratized knowledge and information. The current networks are too slow. You would be able to download the skills of the best chefs in the world. Let's say, I want to learn how Rocker Brothers cook. I want to be as good as them. I download that and exoskeleton teach me how to cut, how to beat the egg, how to cook things. So I'm acquiring the very same skills as they have. We are democratizing skills with that internet. Intentar encontrar un, un hilo ¿no? para que a través de un snack o un plato podamos explicar Londres. Te hemos traído cosas, hemos traído hasta, hasta, hasta césped. <ríe> Té, canela, curry... Para, para mí Londres era muy frío, la lluvia, gris, el spleen, el spleen total. Pero llegas al Borough Market y de repente es colores. Bueno, lo que había en el Borough Market eran vieiras muy buenas. Y algas también, esta parte vieiras, de, de mar, ¿no? Que, que es como una idea de, huma, sí, de, sí, de, de humedad y, huele y, y, también. y salitre, de sal. ¿Por qué no empezamos a apuntar cosas y con el mar? Detrás tenemos un equipo maravilloso, un equipo potente que aglutina mucho talento y que también haya una idea de flujo de conocimiento con ese talento creativo que es el equipo de Sedecan Roca. ¿Tú has comido ese? El... Curry. Sí, tica masala. Tica masala. Tica masala. Pero <risa> podría encajar avena, hongos, hongos secos, algas, no sé, esto hay que probarlo. Mezclamos todo. <risa> bueno, es que Londres es esto, es el team pot de culturas. Y la cuestión es cómo lo hacemos. Hacemos una flor con la vieira. Si la algo cortamos, fino, si algo la fino. cortamos fina y la va, vamos haciendo pétalos con las rodajas de vieira, igual podríamos montar. Pero de pie, ¿eh? que tenga volumen, no plano. Ah, pues es muy difícil, Joan. No, no es difícil, <risas> seguro que lo podemos hacer. Pues 
cocinando, 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 probando, prueba, error, hasta conseguir algo que a todos nos guste. Esto es lo difícil. El consenso es la clave de un plato redondo, un plato cerrado, ¿no? Es el consenso entre todos. Nosotros tres, obviamente, pero también eh, del equipo. tuviéramos estos retos, tendríamos que inventárnoslos. Si no llegara McAllen y nos dijera, tenéis que hacer, ¿no? tenéis que buscar eh, la esencia de una ciudad, tendríamos que inventarnos nosotros mismos ese reto porque eso a nosotros nos da, nos da marcha, es una forma de seguir creando y seguir haciendo cosas. Luego todo esto también aparece en la cocina del Selle Can Roca. Aseguro que habrá un plato en el Selle Can Roca que se llamará Londres. The whole experience has been incredibly interesting. Meeting the people that we've met, um, spending time with them, getting their thoughts on flavor, on what they do. It makes you reflective on what you do, how you do things, can you do things better? Can you push yourself in what you do and can you push the boundaries of what the Macallan does? The flavors on the tasting notes, things like lemongrass, kaffir lime leaf, curry, tea, they're not typical flavor descriptors you would see on a whiskey. And I'm sure it will stir quite a bit of interest, but when you experience it, then I think you'll find that it, it comes together in the same way that you know, London works and it's such a vibrant place. Guys, so here we have it, the result of our journey, experience. We have the essence of London captured in a whiskey. It's a big moment. It's a massive Finally. moment. <laughs> and also we are very excited now because it's a long way, it's a great journey working. <laughs> yeah, so, so let's drink it. Ah, so happy. <laughs> Super. Now we prepare the same job with you. Okay. It's a scallops, fresh scallops with a consomme, with a roasted malt and seaweeds and mushrooms. Sounds delicious. Beautiful. It's okay. Beautiful. <laughs> nice time to share. <laughs> El viaje a Londres nos ha cambiado, sí. Sí, y hemos aprendido y hemos crecido y hemos conocido Londres de una manera mucho más auténtica de la que habíamos vivido desde nuestra mirada gastronómica y cultural. También hay como luces vinculadas a mentes brillantes que allí están más despiertas que en ningún lugar del mundo.